Hello and welcome to my Minecraft Snapshots series where we are taking a look at the newest Minecraft Snapshots and seeing what they add. Um, in the last episode we took a look at the new blocks and also a bit of the new features and stuff like that and in this episode we are going to continue with the items and maybe even the mobs, we'll have to see about that. But anyways, let's get right into it. So a newly weapon, newly created weapon is the crossbow. If we take a look here, I believe it's in here. Yep, there we go. The crossbow looking pretty cool. And let's take some arrows as well. So we have actually, let me just get the normal bow. So we all know the normal bow. We all love it, hopefully. Especially when playing PvP and stuff. We are very much used to this cool bow where you can shoot full power or just some and basically spam it. The crossbow is something new. You hold right click to load it. And then now it's loaded and I can run around with a loaded bow without having to sneak my way like this with a loaded bow and hoping no one is behind the tree. Right now I can hold this and walk around. Is he here? No, is he here? Oh, there we go. And then when you click, it immediately shoots. And you have to hold down the right click to, um, to load it. And here we go. I can run around and shoot whenever I wish to do so. Right here, there we go. Now I want to do a test here because I want to see how much damage this thing does. So if we take a creeper, for example, creeper, as far as I know, has the same health as a player, 10 hearts. So if I'm going to shoot it, there we go once, twice, three times. If I just do that and do it again, just for science purposes. So yes three times. So if I take a crossbow, how long, how many shots will it take me to kill a creeper? Okay, that's one. Twice. So it's the same damage, it seems. Yeah, pretty much the same damage. And of course, it's the, um, the crossbow can be enchanted with three unique enchantments, and I believe these are new. Um, quick charge, one between three, so one, two, or three levels. Multi-shot multi one shoots three arrows at once, but will only consume one arrow. Really cool. In piercing one through four, shoots, shoots through level um, plus one entities except armor stands and end crystals. So if we take a look, actually, does that mean... That's shot through. Hmm, you know what, let, let me just... Let me just make a wall of signs here. There we go. Let's hold on. Let's let's put another sign here, here, and here. So I'm pretty sure before it would stick on the sign, right? It doesn't. It goes through. I'm guessing that what it means. Of course, it's not going to th go through a wall like that that is solid. So I guess that's what that means. It's a bit technical, but I think that's what it means. I'm not 100% sure on that one, but that's pretty cool that it goes through science like that. So that's another thing about these crossbows. Crossbows can also be enchanted with mending and unbreaking. Um, also, the crossbow cannot have both um, multi-shot and piercing, so you can only choose either the piercing enchantment or the multi-shot enchantment. Of course, they can be repaired just like any normal item by combining two that are damaged or one full and one damaged to repair it. And the crafting recipe is actually pretty, um, pretty cool as well, so I'll show you that right now. Just have to look over on my monitor to see it. So you need three what let's just clear up all this mess <laughs> let's get three sticks let's get a iron ingot an iron ingot let's get a we need two string and i believe the rest or the last thing we need is a tripwire hook so that is one string one sorry stick here here and here the ingot here two string like that and a tripwire hook and you get your crossbow. Now the tripwire hook I believe is made with a plank, a stick, as well as an iron ingot, just like that. And you get through two tripwire hooks, I believe the 
crafting recipe is like this. Yes, there we go. And that gives you two tripwire hooks. It does not say anything about all the other enchantments that you can get, um, like flame and stuff. It does not say anything about that, so I don't know if that can be applied. Okay, so currently it seems like you can actually apply it to it like that. But when I shoot it, the arrow is not flammable. It might be looking a little bit better. There we go, see? It's not, well, <laughs> it's not flammable. So I don't know if that will come later on or something, but um, that's a thing to note that um, yeah, flame does not have an effect on it currently, so don't waste your enchanted book on it, unless I'm doing something wrong. Another feature is that if you have a firework rocket, I do believe we have one here. So we, um, if we take a crossbow, it should be able to fire if we have it in our offhand. So if we have that and we load it, ooh, it can shoot the firework rocket the way that we want it to shoot. That is pretty cool. And the longer the flight duration of the rocket, the further it will go from my understanding. Let's try and make a, a cooler firework rocket. Give me a moment. Okay, so here I have three different firework rockets. So flight duration one, three, and two. Let's turn those around. So if we go here, boom. And this one goes further. And this one goes even further. Boom. So if I take this small flight duration in my crossbow and shoot that that way, boom. And if I take the longest one, just so we can see a better comparison and shoot that, it goes a lot further. So that's pretty cool that you can shoot firework rockets. Um, I guess you can maybe throw them at players or something. Whoa, okay, that went. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's pretty cool that you can do that as well. Now, just two fun facts about the crossbow before we go on to the next thing. Um, when you have loaded it, you can actually put the loaded one in an item frame. So if we just take an item frame right here and do that, you could put the we need to be in uh, survival mode. Let's go here. Okay, just doesn't show it. But here I have a loaded one. You can clearly see it's loaded. I put it in here. It does not seem loaded, but it is actually. There we go. And then I get the loaded crossbow. Boom. Um, yeah, also if you put it in a furnace, it can smelt one item per crossbow. And also it is unaffected by the... Um, the strength potion effect, the damage it deals. So that is pretty cool, pretty cool right there. Let's move on to the next subject. One quick thing I did not mention last time about the dyes is that they have also added a brown dye right here. And the way to get it is by using cocoa beans in a crafting table right here or in your normal um, crafting area up here to get the brown dye. And you now use that instead of raw cocoa beans, dyeing, whatever you want, brown. Spawn eggs wise, they have added three new spawn eggs, which is the Illager Beast Spawn Egg, which we will be taking a look at later. We have the Panda Spawn Egg right here, Panda Spawn Egg, and also the Pillager Spawn Egg, which are also all three new mobs in 1.14. So we will be taking a look at those a little bit later. The next thing they have added is Suspicious Stew. It can be found in shipwrecks and in supply chests. Supply chests are those bonus chests, I believe, um, that you enable when you create a new world. I believe mine should be over here. Maybe we got one? No, we didn't get one. And also, for some reason, it's not here in foodstuffs or anything else from what I have seen. Or anyways, it does not... Um, does not appear, not even if I search on stew, only get rapid stew and mushroom stew. But it says it can be found in shipwrecks and supply chests, and it's also, it should be um, crafted with a brown mushroom, red mushroom, and any flower. It's, nope, not that, <laughs> that's not a flower. A corn flower will do, and of course I believe we need a bowl right there. So if we just put these together, 
we got suspicious too. I'm not sure why that does not show. I guess that's a bug that they will have to fix. But this is a suspicious too. Now the interesting about these, it stores, it restores, sorry, six hunker points or three um, of these hunker thingies right here. Three of these, so if I were all the way down, they would heal up to here. So these, those, those three hunger um, meat pups or whatever you want to call them, um, three of those would get replenished. And another thing about the the suspicious stews. It says here on the wiki, the effect give, given upon eating depends on which flower is used as does the exact duration of the effect. So if we were to use an oxide daisy, it should give us regeneration. Um, I'm not sure and gives, yeah, it gives five, roughly around, around five seconds of the potion effect. So oxidase, oxide daisy gives regeneration, cornflower gives jump boost. So if I were to eat this, which I can't so I'll just run, jump around a bit here, don't mind me. Lily of the Valley gives poison. Wither Rose gives Wither. Tulip gives weakness. Azure Blue It gives blindness. What color is that? Or what, um, what flower is that? I'm not sure. Oh, that one, okay. Sorry, I haven't memorized these yet. <laughs> okay, so Azure Blue It gives blindness. Allium gives fire resistance, blue orchid gives saturation, puppy gives speed, and dandelion gives saturation. Now, I am not hungry currently, so I am not able to eat this um, right away, but I'll jump around a bit just to demonstrate. Okay, I'm finally hungry. Let's eat. And I got jump boost for roughly five seconds. Not bad at all. Also, I see that icon. Um, got changed from the jumping rapid to up arrows. Pretty cool. So that is the suspicious stew. The next thing we are going to talk about are mobs, which we just got the spawn eggs from before. So the first one we're going to take a look at is the Illager Beast spawn egg. So let's take a look at him first and talk a little bit about him and then we'll show his skills. So here he is. He has a saddle. He sounds pretty pretty cool and with the horns as well. Um, it destroys crops and attacks villagers. It has 50 hearts, so this this thing is a beast. <laughs> you cannot ride it. Um, as you can hear, my mouse, I'm clicking on it. Um, it attacks with, it, with its head and its horns and it looks pretty cool. We'll demonstrate that in just a second. Um, it, when it when killed, it drops the saddle 100% of the time. It is not affected by looting. Um, actually, this is a fun fact right here. They will flee from rabbits if one is too close. <laughs> so that's a that's um that's interesting. So if we spawn a rabbit, oh wow, okay, okay, it does not like rabbits. <laughs> so I guess all the thing, everything that Will just needs to do is get a rabbit and they should be good. <laughs> That's a fun little thing they have added, like skeletons run away from wolves and creepers run away from cats. I guess these things run away from rabbits. So that's that's pretty neat. Let's see, um, let's see him take on a village real quick. Normally I would defend the village, but currently, unfortunately, I need a village for demonstration purposes. And I believe we can do this. Locate village. And we just click on this, bam. And we should be teleported to a village. I guess it's the nearest one, okay. So here we go. I'm very sorry villagers, this is for science. Um, hello, okay. Let's get him closer. Oh, a little bit of lag. Okay, that's strange. He does not attack. Oh, oh whoa, okay, there we go, that surprised me. <laughs> um, okay, so if we just spawn a bunch of villagers here, as you can see, it goes ahead and attacks with its head right there. It looks pretty funny too. So there you go, if we spawn one up here as well, right here, nope, oh, not you, right here in the corner, there we go smashes the crops and if we take a village over here as you can see and places one over here oh dear 
You can't get that one. Okay, now it dies. And it goes um, and attacks those rules here. So that's something. I guess the next thing we will look at is the pillager. So take let's take a look at this guy. So the pillager raid villagers. Um, I think they basically kill villagers mainly. It has they are equipped with crossbows and they sound like that. I believe they can they can drop their crossbows and also they might drop emeralds. There we go. Drop emeralds. Yes, so Vicky says drop emeralds and their crossbows when killed, affected by moving. So it's not 100% certain that it they will. But right now I'm getting one emerald per kill. But again, that might be randomized. See right there, I didn't get any. So maybe you'll get some emeralds and maybe you'll get the crossbow, but it's not sure. Um, it's affected when you whether or not you use looting as well. Um, they of course cannot uh, wear armor of any type, just like normal villagers can't. And it's mainly skeletons and zombies that can wear armor as far as I know. So um, yeah, there you go, that's the pillagers. I don't think they do anything to the crops, it doesn't say anything. It mainly just attacks villagers. There we go. I'm not sure what these pillagers and these big guys will um will do in when they are actually implemented. If they well, friendly fire. If they will like go around the map, or if they will just spawn outside a village all of a sudden when you're there and attack it. Because if the chunks are not loaded, as far as I know, of course this cannot happen unless they add a new feature of course so that'll be interesting to see in the future updates but Paul Village but it was for science um, plus they don't really yeah do much it's just a game okay no um no need to worry <laughs> um, let's go on to the panda a few things I will quickly want to talk about the pillagers um, are that pillagers do not naturally spawn in any biome but can be spawned with a slash summon command or the spawn egg of course. Um, of course that should change in future updates I suppose. It does not say anything that they will spawn at villagers or something like that so I'm not sure what's gonna happen there. Um, also it is not stated there um, the chances of getting an emerald or their crossbow that is not stated either. Um, but that is pretty much it. So now let's move on to the pandas. All right, so the next map to talk about are the panda. Um, I do not believe pandas naturally spawn at the moment, but when they do, pandas should spawn in groups of one to two in, bam in bamboo jungle biomes. They spawn on grass blocks similarly to other passive mobs, but are rarer than other jungle mobs. So that would mean rarer than the cat even. Hmm. They spawn with randomized personality, with the default one being the most common and the brown variant being the rarest. So that's interesting. You can get, you can get two different pandas and look at them. So cute. I love them. Um, you know, let's let's get him some um, bamboo around him so he feels a little bit more at home. So let's put a bit there around here. He seems to follow me around for I don't know some reason. <laughs> There we go. Maybe because I have this. Oh, did I did I trap you somehow? There we go. He seems to be following me. Oh, you can give him. Oh, he's eating. <laughs> I love that. Oh wow, he's eating. He he's a happy teddy bear. He's a happy happy teddy bear. Who's a happy teddy bear? Okay, I'm gonna calm down now. <laughs> Uh, okay, so the wiki says here, behavior, pandas will occasionally lie on their backs, roll over or sit upright with their paws together. So that's pretty cool right there. Um, pandas can have different personalities, either normal, aggressive, weak, lazy, worried or playful. Um, so let's go over those. I will use the wiki because it helps me keep track of things <laughs> since this is a, a um, complex mob right here. Let's give him some more. There we go. Um, aggressive pandas are, are neutral and will attack the player and other mobs when hit. What? Aggressive pandas are neutral and will attack the player and other mobs when hit for six health per attack. Um, I'm not sure what that means. If I hit it with my fist, it shouldn't attack, but when I hit it with a sword or something, it will. I'm not sure what that means. 
Um, but it also says when nearby painters are attacked, aggressive painters will become hostile towards attacker. I don't know what to hate this guy, so I'm just going to keep feeding him. <laughs> the laser painters will not interact with the player or eat items off the ground. They will also lay down on the ground. So if I do this, they will eat it? I don't know. Oh yes, they do. They actually do. Interesting. They are slower than normal pandas because they are lazy. Worried pandas uh, will avoid most maps except pan other pandas. Will shake and hide their faces during thunderstorms. Aww. Hmm. That's interesting personalities. Um, playful pandas will roll over and jump around more often than other pandas. And weak pandas, they tend to sneeze more often than regular. They sneeze. That's interesting. And they have 10 health instead of 20, so they so weak pandas have 5 hearts instead of 10, so this guy have um, 10 hearts. So that's pretty interesting. Breathing for 2 pandas to enter lung mode, there must be at least 8 there must be at least 8 bamboo blocks within a 5 block radius from them. Once that requirement is met, the player can feed them bamboo and they will mate, producing a baby panda. You know what? Let's, tr let's try that. So that's 2 pandas right here. So that means 8 bamboo blocks within radius. So this should be it right here. And let's see if we can get a baby... Um, when... if we can get... Some of them, if they can, if we, I, I can talk. Let's see if we can get them to produce a baby. There we go. I actually forgot to hit record there, unfortunately, but I gave both of them um, some bamboo and they went into love mode. And here we go. Here's the baby panda. That looks cool. Sorry, did I interrupt your, there we go. Will you eat as well? No, okay. So that's a baby panda right there and that's how you breed them. Um, also, there is some stuff about the appearance. Um, the appearance of panda depends on their personality. So, aggressive pandas have angry eyebrows. Later pandas ha have a smiling face. Weak pandas have teary eyes and stubby noses. Ew. Warrior pandas have puppy eyes similar to tamed wolf. Playful pandas have their tongues out. That's pretty cool. So, we can tell what... Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> oh, it seems like maybe a smile on the face. This one does not have. This one has. That's cool. Oh, little bit mummy. Yay. <laughs> that's cute. Okay, that's pretty that's pretty cool right there. Um if they were to die, adult pellet pandas will drop zero to two pen bamboo and one between three experience orbs if killed by a team wolf or a player. Um Of course killing their baby panda heals no items or anything like that. Although they do have a chance of spawning one experience orb. But that's pretty much it for the pandas, I believe. I don't think I missed anything. Um, wait a second. There's something here. Um, pandas will seek out bamboo and cake items and eat them, which produces particle effects. Pandas will follow players holding bamboo. So we saw that when I hold the bamboo, it will... They will... Okay. They would sometimes. There, there we go. It follows me around. Cake. I'm not sure if it has to be placed or if it has to be um, on the ground. I don't know. But um, that's the pandas right there. I guess it has to be on the ground for them to pick it up. It would be weird if they... It would be pretty cool if they started eating the block, but I don't think they will. But that's pretty much the mobs in 1.14 snapshot. Let's see what else is on the list. Okay, so the last two things that I want to talk about are um, some very short ones, so I'm gonna get right into it. By the way, the panda did eat the cake over there right before, so that's pretty cool. But the first one is the command formats. They have added two new commands, the slash drop command and the slash schedule command. I'm not going to talk too much about them because honestly, I'm not sure what they do, but I'll read the wiki and yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm not it, too much into commands. But the slash drop command and the slash schedule command. The drop command um, drops items in various contexts and the syntax is um, drop and then the target and then the source. The different sources are award for advancements, fish for fishing, loot for loot chests, kill for entity drops and mine for blood, blood drops. So I think I gave it. So if we were to do entity 
and then the target, which is me. Um, it seems like it's not complete because it says this, but if I were to do that, yet yeah, it does not seem to have any effect at the moment. There, I'm not sure if I'm doing something wrong. Um, maybe two. No, see, see, I'm not too much into commands, but those of, those of you who are command nerds probably know what I'm doing wrong. Let me know down in the comments below. Um, feel free to play with it, of course. But the schedule command, this schedule command right there, schedules, schedules functions or tags to run in game time ticks. Any tag or function can be scheduled only once. Calling for an already scheduled function tag will replace the oldest records. So again, I'm not sure. Um, time. Um, again, you have to know these different things and yeah, but that's pretty much what the schedule command does. It does weirdly enough, not, um, show the command syntax. Um, here it is. Here's what the wiki has written. So the schedule function, function, string, and time, and then the integer for the time or the number for the time. So yeah, time specifies the amount of time to the laser function by. Um, yeah, it's not in too much. It's not described a whole lot, so I can't tell to tell you too much about it, but um. Yeah, the last thing I wanted to talk about were the new advancements. They have added four new advancements. Um, if I go to advancement, one of them is called Old Betsy Shoot a Crossbow. Um, I'm not sure. There we go, Old Betsy. I did that one. And then we got Who's the Pillager Now? Give a Pillager a taste of their own medicine. So you shoot a Pillager with a crossbow and also this one, two birds, one arrow. Kill two phantoms with a piercing arrow. So that's pretty cool. Um, ooh, a piercing arrow. Oh, that's what it means. Sorry. A piercing arrow apparently maybe allows you to shoot through two, um, two entities. That must be it. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. So you can try and do that. Have fun. <laughs> um, and then the last one, where is that? Where is it? You have to find it first. Okay, I can't find it, but it says a ballistic kill five unique mobs with one crossbow arrow. So that is five unique mobs with one crossbow arrow. Okay, definitely if I'm doing that. Um, but that is pretty much it for the 1.14, the first snapshot of 1.14. Um, we also have some block changes, but that is something we're going to talk about in the next episode. So hopefully you enjoyed this one. And uh, yeah. Hope to see you next time. Have a nice day. Stay tuned for the next episode. Bye-bye.